NVIDIA has unveiled a new AI powered chatbot tool um, called chat with RTX. So this is specifically designed um, to run locally on your computer. You're not needing to be connected to the internet and you can get an incredible AI chat experience. I want to break down everything that's included in here, some of the features, some of the limitations, um, and then some of the broader implications that I think this brings up in the entire industry. So the first thing I do want to mention here is that this is for RTX 30 and 40 series GPU owners. So this is something that NVIDIA does uh, this is kind of a classic Nvidia thing where they'll create some really interesting powerful software it only works with their um, hardware right like so you have to have their GPU in your computer for example I'm currently recording this on something called Nvidia broadcast now Nvidia broadcast is an amazing tool because what it actually allows me to do is I can look at my computer screen and it still looks like I'm making eye contact with the camera this is me actually look making eye contact with the camera so you can kind of see the difference there if you're watching the video and not listen to the, the podcast recording but you get the idea either way um, the only way I was able to use Nvidia broadcast is if I had a powerful enough G Nvidia GPU in my computer so I literally went rebuilt an entire desktop computer from scratch uh, with you know this really beefy Nvidia GPU and now I can run this and you know I could probably run this new chatbot tool and a lot of other things as well um, but I think it's you know essentially it's creating some software that gives people an incentive to go and buy uh, NVIDIA GPUs. So it makes a lot of sense. Now, what is actually, you know, in this new tool? So, um, of course, you're going to need the Ford, the 30 or 40 series graphics cards, the GeForce RTXs, um, in order to run this, but you can run this directly from your Windows PC. So this new tool essentially is going to let you kind of interact with a customizable um, Gen AI model, which is a lot like OpenAI's ChatGPT, right? Um, but essentially, it's linking with your personal documents. So it can look at your files, your notes, your queries, everything, and it can use that and give you answers. So if you're like, hey, um, I made a, you know, I made like a document about X, Y, and Z like a few months ago. Could you find it somewhere? Um, I know that like I struggle with this sometimes. I'm like, where the heck did I put this thing? And I'm looking through like folders and places and I put it in the recycle bin and, you know, whatever. So this is something interesting for that. In addition, here's some of the key features of it. So number one, it's going to be leveraging um, the AI model Mistral. So this is an open source model Mistral out of France. Um, it's been making a lot of headway because it's kind of comparable to ChatGPT. Um, and it's, I think what's interesting here is this is an open source model, right? So if they were trying to link to, with actual ChatGPT, they'd have to pay for API credits every time they access OpenAI. When they're using this open source model, it can be hosted directly on your computer. It's being run on your computer now because your computer is powerful enough. You literally don't have to pay anything for it other than you know buying the hardware from Nvidia which I think is a fascinating business model so um, chat with RTX uses Mistral but it's also compatible with some other text-based models including Meta's Llama 2 which is also open source so also no payment there what I will say uh, you know the big disclaimer here is that it does require a ton of storage on your device so it's anywhere between 50 and 100 gigabytes to actually run this thing or, or store on your computer and um, and this is really just to accommodate like all of the necessary file operations so really what it's um what it does is it has support for a bunch of different file formats so it can do pdf dot doc dot doc x and also xml um and it can also even incorporate youtube playlist transcriptions into its data set to kind of improve the you know searching capabilities of it which i think is really really interesting so all that being said let's talk about some of the limitations so nvidia recently has kind of been highlighting that chat with rtx is designed for what they're saying um simplicity and but really they're just saying like this lets users extract information from their files um, by typing in questions right so it's not even just like where is a specific file it's like hey i talked about this in a file where is that or what is the answer to this thing and it like searches all of the documents on your computer and it's like oh you know you're like you know maybe you did the onboarding for your company and they gave you like uh you know your vacation policy and you're like i know it's on my computer somewhere i can't find it it can go search it, find it, and give you the information. So I think that's very interesting. What I will say is the tool has some limitations, including the inability to remember context between questions and potential um, variability in response relevance because of factors like question rephrasing. So what that means is you ask it one question, it'll give you the answer, then you, like, something that's great about ChatGPT is it's not just a single-shot response. It's like... Um, 
it's like a whole conversation, right? So you're like, hey, I'm, I'm building this thing. Give me like the title for a new YouTube video and it makes you the title for the video. And it's like, now give me a description for that. And it's like, now give me some talking points for the video, right? Like, so it, it understands the context of all the questions and it links them together. This does not. So it's kind of like one single shot questions. Um, this is because of the way the model performs. It's trying to, you know, be open source specifically on your computer. Um, the data set size isn't super big. Um, so there's a bunch of different, you know, things like that. But what I will say is NVIDIA recently wrote about this in a blog post and this is what they said. They said, quote, rather than searching through notes or saved content, users can simply type queries. For example, one could ask, what was the restaurant my partner recommended while in Las Vegas? And chat with RTX will scan local files and user point, um, the user points to it and provide the answer with context. So I'm assuming you'd be able to, you know, put in like your chat messages and other things like that, which I think is really, really interesting. So when we're looking at kind of like broader implications here, um, I think the release of chat RTX really kind of aligns with a growing trend of running AI models locally. This is something I've talked about on a lot of my podcasts, um, but essentially I think it offers a lot of benefits. Um, number one, I think in my opinion is like privacy. When you chat with chat GPT, especially if you're on the free tier, they're taking all of your conversations and using it to retrain. There's, um, you know, moderators that are looking at those conversations. So a lot of companies have just like banned it saying, Hey, like, you know, JP Morgan Chase and Apple were like, Hey, you can't use chat GPT. And so OpenAI had to like, kind of make these custom like enterprise tiers, regardless, whether it's for your company, whether you're a small company or a big company, or you don't have the budget to pay for the enterprise tier, but you want to still use chat GPT. These are all issues you kind of have to grapple with. And so I think a, a solution like chat with RTX solves a huge problem by allowing you to run this locally. Um, you get all of the privacy benefits, you get lower latency. Um, it's more cost effective. And I think compared to, you know, cloud hosting alternatives like chat GPT that's running the cloud, this is really quite a great, um, this is quite a great tool. So recently the World Economic Forum has said that they anticipate a significant increase in devices capable of running Gen AI models offline. So that's PCs, there's internet of things. Um, but, so I think like this is kind of the trend where we're probably going and I tend to agree with them there. Um, what I will say though, is that the, how easy it is to run and train these models um, is gonna be very interesting to see how this plays out. There's a lot of people that, that are like concerned about the potential for misuse or mal or like malicious actors, but like, yeah. So any, any hacker in North Korea can write, uh, you know, malware anyways. So I don't, I don't really tend to think that like, this is going to expedite it, um, to an insane level. Now I know some people, some people will disagree with me on that, but I think at the end of the day, um, this technology is available, it's viable, it's economical. Um, it increases productivity, so it's going to get rolled out. And if people are concerned about like the negative uses, let's look at how we can use it um, to counteract those negative uses, right? So like if we're worried that hackers are going to use it, how can cybersecurity experts use the same tools to counteract it, right? So I think there's like conversations to be had. There's going to be growing pains uh, with all of this. So not to say like nothing bad will ever happen, but you know, people die in car crashes, we shouldn't ban cars. That's kind of where I'm at with all of this. In any case, um, NVIDIA's chat with RTX right now, I think represents a huge step forward in really like, I hate this phrase because I feel like it's a buzzword, democratizing access to AI. Like every single startup and I see that's like, that's what they that's what they say they, they're doing. And I'm sure I've said that many times about my own startup, AI Box, which is a no code AI app builder and marketplace that we're currently raising a crowdfunding uh, round for. We've raised over $430,000. If you're interested, I'll leave a link in the show notes. You can go check it out. But anyways, the whole democratizing access to AI, sometimes I cringe about that phrase, but I do actually believe that this is a big step forward in that, right? If you don't have the money to pay for it, if you don't have internet access, you can still um, use this. I mean, also another funny, like ironic thing is like, if you don't have enough money to pay for like premium chat GPT or to always have internet access, you could t technically use this, but the cost of these GPUs is actually quite high. So it's not like it's cheap anyways. But you know, aside from from that, um, I do think that it is more of an experimental application. That's what they're saying about it right now. Um, than like a product race solution. I got to give kudos to NVIDIA though for putting something out like this that's more experimental. Um, even NVIDIA broadcast this like eye tracking thing that I use. Um, it's still in beta. It's been like in beta for a year. I don't know when they like pull the beta t title off of it, but I'm thrilled when people do that and they don't wait till something's perfect, you know, years later, um, especially these big companies. So I'm, I'm all on board with that. What I will say though is 
I think as the landscape of offline AI model usage is growing a lot, the technology benefits and challenges are also going to maybe not grow, but they're gonna become more defined. Like I mentioned, right? There's uh, the potential that people could misuse this, but I think that there's also the potential that we can use this to better counteract bad actors. So I think all in all, this is a net positive. All of this advancement, all this technological advancement, I believe is raising the global standard of living and is a great thing. So I'll keep you up to date on how this rolls out, what people are using it for, and what are the, some of the most interesting use cases um, in this new NVIDIA tool that they're launching.